There we go. Aya! And welcome back to Nekojishi. This will be the last time that we visit this game. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to go up here and just And we're just gonna hop right in. Oh god, that's loud. Here we go. Okay. Before me, all I could hear was the clamoring of a thousand voices filling the air, and the dull thuds of a thousand more footsteps resonating with the solid floor below. The atmosphere was energetic, alive, and honestly, there were just a lot of people here. Once we entered the convention, I started to notice the change in disposition evident, evident across Lin Hu's face, seemingly thoroughly displeased in some manner by the situation for him. Clearly his discomfort is noticed, and somewhat caused, by the people around us. No one speaks to him, content, on watch, content to watch on as his eyes anxiously dart around the myriad of people in the crowd before him. Admittedly, Lin Hu doesn't give off the friendliest impression when it comes to dealing with a group of strangers. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's keeping the crowd from swarming us. That is to say, the two of us definitely stood out amongst the people lined up. I'm thankful that the queue lines are single file. It's a convenient logistical barrier that has prevented anyone from coming near the uneasy Tiger Man. So far. However, it wasn't long before we entered the convention hall proper. As a result, there was no such luxurious protection to be had. Father apologies, father apologies, father apologies, father apologies, father apologies. Quite, for there to be so many. Now, now, you're just scaring everyone away. But to have so many people looking upon me, Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're pretty tall after all. Of course you're going to stand out. Honestly, by most people's standards, Lin Hu is massive, his well-built body towering well up to two meters tall. Granted, to me, he's still a beast man. Who knows what everyone else is seeing right now? After all, I possess the power of the yin-yang eyes. Just as I perceive Lin Hu's god form, my senpai just happens to be a leopard cat beast man. Although, in senpai's case, I still know what he looks like as a human. The same can't be said for Lin Hu. I wonder what he'd look like as a human. Hmm, if I had to guess, I'd picture him as like a middle-aged man with a strong, angular, stubble visage. Then again, I could be completely wrong. Maybe he's actually got a baby face with a giant- I, I mean, a giant guy with a baby face. Pfft, <laughs> a baby face. Okay, now I really want to know what he looks like. Not that I'm complaining. After all, as a beast man, he's definitely my type. He's pretty well dressed today. I never imagined a denim yeah. shirt would suit him so well. Who would blame all the guys staring at him? To have a real body is a rare occurrence. I needn't waste this chance being stared at. It just means people like you. Now how is that a bad thing? But... I want to spend time with you, hand in hand. If I were to do that, surely would you not be embarrassed by all the attention upon us? Um... maybe. The thought makes me anxious. Which isn't to say I disagree with doing that, it's just... Alright. Let me put it this way. Isn't this a chance to show off? If this is the only chance I get to hold hands with Lin Hu, I'm not about to let it pass me by. Let's do it. There's nothing more I want than to be able to show off my handsome boyfriend. He rubs his nose shyly. Certainly. 
and let's give them a show to remember. Within the next moment, Lin Hu takes hold of my hand, leans down, and kisses me tenderly on the forehead. A muffled squeal sound from the nearby crowd. A muffled squeal sounds from the nearby crowd. Someone's going to mention this online, aren't they? Well, I'll be fine, as long as no one from the dance club finds out. As far as I know, none of them are into furry stuff anyways. My attention returns to Lin Hu, his warm hands held within mine. To me, they're giant fuzzy paws. When I think about it, I've barely ever held Lin Hu's paws. I mean, it'd be weird to do so at home, and it's not like I can exactly do so whilst out and about. I'd just be grabbing thin air. My feelings swirl around as, as I run my fingers across the bottom of his palm, his fingers squeezing tightly around mine. It's calming in a way that reaches right into the depths of my heart. Oh dear. Wah, you meanies! As if out of nowhere, Senpai rushes out from the crowd. Liao, how could you act all lovey-dovey with the old man while we're not even here? Why not? What, would you rather us do this in front of you? Meanie, I'm the one who came here early to buy stuff for you and everything, and this is how you repay me? I guess you're right. Anyway, so, did things go well? Also, is Kulao coming? Before I can finish speaking, Leopard squeezes out of the nearby crowd. I like it. It's epic. So handsome. <laughs> it really fits him, doesn't it? I spent ages working out the perfect outfit just for Kulao. Which is why you two disappeared without a trace this morning. Well, it's not like you could wear something like that on the train over. He had to get changed once we arrived, but it was totally worth it. I've always wanted to wear something like it, but the style just doesn't suit me, you know? I mean, you look cute too, senpai. Hmm, too late, slowpoke. Your ego just gets bigger every day. Hey, what's that meant to mean? Alright, whatever. So what did you guys get up to? What did we get up to? Well, just before a bunch of guys came up to us wanting to take selfies with Kulao... Sorry. Well, just before a, bu a bunch of guys came up to us wanting to take selfies with Kulao... It's almost like we're famous or something. That's not what I meant. Some guys even tried to sneak photos of him. If he ever kept this body, he'd totally rock it in showbiz. Whoa, hang on a sec. Got a photo of Kulao? Let me see it. For sure. Come here, check this out. Senpai pulls out his phone and swipes through some posts from the con until he seems to find what he was talking about. Huh. Kulao really is in this one. He's easy to pick out because, well, he's a clouded leopard. So I guess my powers extend to photos of spirits as well. Shame. Would have been nice to see Kulao's human form. Oh well, no big loss. The photo was taken from behind, so I wouldn't be able to see his face anyway. I scroll down the thread just to see a bunch of guys talking about how they would totally go out with Kulao. I mean, I know he's handsome, but it's not like any of these guys will be able to even see him tomorrow. Engrossed in the replies, it takes me a moment to notice Kulao curiously peeking his head around to look at the screen. In a gesture of novelty, he reaches out a finger to swipe across the photo on the phone's display, mimicking my prior actions. Before now, he's never had a physical body. I wonder if he ever took a photo. What face would he see? Mwah. Why is nobody taking secret photos of me and posting them online? Senpai, you're pretty normal. I mean, relatively. But how can you call a super duper cutie like me normal? Well, you don't stand out in a crowd like Lin Hu does, and it's not hard for people to not take notice of Kulao with the clothes you shoved him in, and it's hard for people not to take notice of Kulao with the clothes you shoved him in. Does it just really need to be exposed like that? 
His tattoo is a work of beauty. It'd be a shame not to have him show it off. Sure, I guess, but pairing that with Kulao's figure? You can't just go walking around like that. It's too... alluring. At least we're at a con, so it's kind of normal for people to show off with flashy outfits. Well, you've got no one but yourself to blame. You're the one who made Kulao stand out so much, you know? Uh. Well, today's a special day, so I'll let Kulao take the leading role. The old man can even bask in Kulao's reflected glory. It's super generous of me. Me? Basking in reflected glory? Heh, <laughs> like usual. You're being too lovey-dovey with Liao. It's about time you gave someone else a spotlight. Hmm. To my surprise, Lin Hu didn't make any rebuttal. At least, I don't think I'm being too lovey-dovey with him. On that note, Senpai walks over to me with his phone once again. Hey, Liao, what do you reckon size difference means? What? Uh, where did you see that? Under some posts of you and the old man. Oh, well, it's referring to how Lin Hu's so big, like, well, larger than most guys, that is. Huh, really? Sounds unnecessarily vague to me. They're just nerd terms and stuff. If you don't get it, don't bother. Alright, whatever. Here's your stuff, nerd. No. Senpai hands me the bag he's been holding, stuffed full with relics of his earlier escapades in the convention hall. Seriously, though, I didn't expect so many people to rock up at, rock up at such a niche convention. I'm kind of floored. Yeah, you wouldn't see anything like this back home. For a moment, I take in the view around me, my eyes darting between people, stalls, artwork, the whole place is a buzz with fans from all walks of life. Not to mention all the people in stunningly crafted fursuits, it's something I'd never see back home. Alrighty, we gotta get moving. It's not like you, it's not like you get to go to a furry convention every day. It'd be a waste not to check things out. Sure, let's go. Yes, we shall. Lin Hu reaches out his paw, which I am about to take happily in hand before... Within my split second of hesitation, Ku Lao moves in and takes hold of my hand instead. Eh? Surely? Liao's hand, I want to hold. Well, I think the old man should give Ku Lao a chance for once. That is to suggest I usually have a chance? Not like Ku Lao isn't in the exact same boat as you are, old man. Does Liao not have two hands? Suddenly, Lin Hu has taken hold of my other hand. There's nothing I can do. Somewhat awkwardly, we start walking, three of us side by side. Guys, even I want to take a photo of you at this point. Nope, no way in hell, Sunpai. Lin Hu and Ku Lao were already the center of attention. As you can imagine, by this act, we've only drawn more and more eyes upon us. Ah, a regular college guy being scrambled all over by two other handsome guys. You know, everyone here is absolutely going to be talking about you three online for days now. Then why don't you help? What do you expect me to do? It's not like I can grab your third hand. And then with a twirl, Senpai walks off. Anxious, I look between the Kulao and Lin Hu for acknowledgement. However, they're just staring at each other, too preoccupied to notice me whatsoever. After, day, after today, I probably shouldn't look at the internet for a while. No matter what I do, us three walking side by side in the crowded convention hall causes a disturbance, which doesn't even begin to describe how I feel about the people staring at us. It's not long before practically a moving roadblock, a group of people soon swarming to block our path at the first opportunity. Yo, so what are you guys cosplaying? We're not- we're just trying to find a way past- Really? It totally looks like you guys are role-playing anime characters or something. It's not like that. Just let us go, alright? I cannot leave Liao to handle this alone. You, step back. Guys, you know he can hear you, right? Zip it or you'll just make things worse. And please think about how I feel about this already while you're at it. Okay, let's sort this out. You two can spend time with me, but only one at a time. Take turns, or we'll just be dealing with this all day. <laughs> if Liao wants, okay. After I make my demands, they finally let me go. Well, that's half of my problems dealt with. If we are to do that, Liao, which one of us do you wish to spend time with? I want to go with Liao. Many people. Excited. I'm not excited about having to choose at all. Regardless, I want to make this fair, but no matter what, I'll have to pick someone to go with first. Who should we hang out with first? Well, let's just go through the Hey, Kulao, I'd absolutely spend time with you this afternoon. But first, I want to hang out with Lin Hu. 
Are you okay with that? If Liao want, we'll be fine. No. And when I get back, we'll be able to spend a bunch of time together. I'll look forward to it. So just wait a little while, okay? Okay. Let's smile. Oh, so you worked it out? Mm-hmm. Then I'll take care of Kula. What? Come on, don't look so upset. Let's go, Kula. I'll be sure to show you some good stuff. And just like that, my senpai just appeared out of nowhere, grabbed Kula, and dragged him away in the opposite direction. Definitely on purpose. I do hope I don't owe him for that. Hey, cheer up! It's not like I won't get to him later anyway. Even if I chose to spend time with Linfu first, that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean I'm partial to him. I just want both Kulao and Linfu to be happy. At least we're finally able to properly walk through the convention. Even if it's not as crowded as the entrance, there's still heaps of people here. Looking around, I see some of the booths, booths that have lines all over the place. Thank god I had Senpai run in and get the stuff I wanted earlier this morning. So, Lin Hu. Hmm? Did Goddess Mazu say anything? About the incarnation, that is? After all, we had to borrow the power of a Yao Guai. I'm worried that the Goddess would be displeased. To speak honestly, there was a quarrel back at the temple. What kind of quarrel? Not a serious one. Clairvoyant and Clairaudience merely expressed their concerns. A few gripes were also passed between the two between the other Guardian Tigers, clearly out of envy, if you ask me. Regardless, they are, not wor they are not worthy of my attention. So the goddess agreed. She asked for silence, and then provided consent, although she did not provide her explanation until our meeting in private. What were her reasons? I mean, if you can tell me, that is. She said that while such actions would be out of order, they would be allowed so that I may get closer to our Jitong. That, and apparently she believes it... She believes it beneficial to grow my familiarity with the kitten and the Yao Guai of the Yan family. The Yao Guai of the Yan family? Correct, but it's not something to be proud of. Again, as you very well know, the gods in Yao Guai do not necessarily rival each other. As such, occasionally we may turn a blind eye to some Yao Guai of notable force. So, the Yao Guai of the Yan family are powerful enough that the gods usually don't bother with them? The Yan family has developed over many generations, but I do not know much more. After all, our temple is located far south from here. For an idea of the nature of things, even the city god of Taipei would not readily get in their way. Hence, it's a worthwhile premise to be on good terms with them. That, for gods, that seems really... I don't know... disquieting? What else would we do? These Yaogwai are the protectors of the Yan family. In a way, all they achieve is helping people. Just because they are Yaogwai does not mean that the gods should just kill them. So, offering your body like this is more of a diplomatic move than anything. All I see it as is an opportunity to be with you, Liao. So basically, the goddess only agreed to this to grow face with, with the Yao Guai of the An family. And here I am thinking she wanted the best for Lin Hu and me. And please, do not fill your head with such nonsense. You know as much as I do that the goddess wishes only to support us. You, you knew exactly what was bothering me. Your worries were clear from one look on, at your face. Now, putting that aside, that, over there, it has taken my attention for some time. You don't suppose that this is meant to be me by any chance? I look in the direction of his gesturing. It's a character on the cover of a nearby Jujinshi that clearly resembles a guardian tiger, one uncannily similar to Linhu himself. Oh, you mean that? Yep, that's you. Me? You didn't know? After all those daily life of worshipper posts you always put on your blog, I guess it was bound to happen. Of course, you did express that gods don't have set appearances or genders, however. That doesn't stop the internet from digging into it. There's online headcanons about you, how you look, your weight, even what you do all day. A bit of it's cooked up, but it's amazing the kind of detail people get into. Even Kulao and Senpai have fan followings online now. Honestly, you guys are pretty get- you guys are getting pretty popular in the fandom. Popular? Does that mean you have fan art? Yeah. There's fan art of you all over the place. Of course, I try not to look at any when you guys are around. That'd feel a bit weird. You shouldn't be looking at any at all. I, I mean, I only look at them when I'm sh I only look at them to make sure I'm not exposed. It'd be a pain if people found out about me. Thankfully, no one talks about me online. All they care about is shipping you guys together. You know, everyone loves beast men, right? Lin whose features are plastered with, with a complicated expression. A mixture of bewilderment, embarrassment, and a distinct bashful averting glare that I've never quite seen on the Tiger Man before. 
to be sure, this does say adults only, correct? W well, what else would you expect from a doujinshi market? Am I to believe, then, that this is an illustration of me and that kitten? I mean, I can't be sure. Maybe? Uh, so I don't want to step on Linhu's feelings, but he's right. Everyone ships him with Kulao and Senpai. With complete disregard of the Jujin's supposed content, Linhu walked straight up to the booth. If possible, may I take a look at this book? The booth owner is somewhat intimidated by Linhu. Without speaking, he points to a sample book on the table. Clearly, there's no need to ask if he's over 18. Hmm. Yes, I will pay for this. What? Paying no attention to my explanation, exclamation, Lin Hu pays the artist and takes a copy of the Dujin in question. Why do my actions surprise you? But th that's... You're okay with that? Why not? After all, this is nothing but the author's imagination. There is no ill will towards me whatsoever. Don't you think it's, um, a little bit disrespectful? Perhaps some gods may see it that way. However, I'm quite used to it. If you recall, I've read every single book you own, regardless of content. I'm... I'm grateful. For that matter, I'd highly doubt that either Lee Kulao or the Kitten would mind either. It is not as if it depicts any other gods to be bothered by this. Hey, strange question, but in general. What do you think of people drawing porn of, you know, gods? I would say that I would say it is respect that matters. Not that I'm saying respect is a free pass to do whatever you want, but I believe that people who possess respect know what to do and what not to do. However, if you do feel guilty, nothing is stopping you from going to a temple. I'd say most gods couldn't care less, just as long as you bring them sacrifices. So it's the sacrifices that matter. No, it's belief. To be clear, it does depend on the god in question. It's not like I can speak for everyone. Just like humans, everyone is different. For that matter, the concept for this book is quite is really is quite intriguing. Lin Hu returns his attention to flipping through the pages of the book as I peek at the pages beside his shoulder. I did see a preview of this book online, but didn't read it since I was afraid one of them seeing it and being embarrassed and being embarrassed. Regardless of the premise, it's a doujin, one hot and steamy enough to get almost any guy flustered, and yet it still doesn't offend him in the slightest. He seems to enjoy it for that matter. So you did say that there have been many books like this recently, did you not? Well, I guess so. In that case, hurry on now. I wish to I wish to procure all of them. V what? That's a ton of money, and that's besides the point. I never expected it to be quite this popular. Man, I'm exhausted. In the span of the past hour, we had blocked the whole convention, frantically. Despite our best efforts, many Dujins had already sold out by the time we reached their booths. Clearly, we sprung into action far too late. Of course, I didn't ask Senpai to get any of them. After all, I was trying to make sure they didn't find out. Too late for that now. Even then, like Lin Hu said, I never expected them to be nearly this popular. They're literally all over the con. Every one of these sold out books just happens to be about me. R really? I'm not surprised though. I shall not worry about losing belief anytime soon. I freeze up in embarrassment just thinking about the roles Lin Hu must play in all of these doujins. You really don't mind? Those books, considering the stuff you do with Kulao and Senpai. It's a somewhat odd thought, but none of it is real. However, I'm intrigued by how people see us paired together. So are you jealous, Liao? Hey, what are you talking about? It's just the content. Well, what if I really did have feelings towards those two? S seriously? I'm kidding. Look at yourself. So worried over something like that. Lin Hu pokes my nose. I'm fine merely reading these for fun. After all, I wouldn't be as insensitive to as to do so if I really had any relations with them. Now would I? I guess, hey, I wasn't worried. I just thought you would have been embarrassed to see... I wouldn't. I know the difference between fiction and reality. However, you're cute when you're jealous, Liao. I'm not. It's alright, it's alright, Liao. Lin Hu brushes his paw gently along the side of my face. O okay, well, it's lunchtime, so uh, how about we get some food? I pull out my phone and call Senpai, mostly as a way to avoid where that conversation was heading. Quickly, we organize lunch and meet up with Senpai and Kulao. How'd things go for you guys? Not bad. 
It's so cool. There's heaps of people wearing cute animal suits. We run around t taking photos with them. Don't worry, I'll be sure to show you when we get back home. Uh, so Senpai was taking photos with fursuiters. Hmm. I wonder what they look like. So, what should we get to eat? I'm starving here. Should we go to a restaurant? Or just get takeaway? By the way, today's lunch is on me. I would like to purchase something for myself. For yourself? Well, today's a special day, after all. As I'm currently able to, I would wish to buy something with my own hands. Ooh, yeah, you've only got one day to do that, don't you? Hence, why I would like to try. To try and experience Liao's daily life. Me, too. Kulao, cool you too? You guys are just going to make a big kerfuffle out of this. You know, you guys will just... I can already imagine it. The two of them walking right up to the counter, flashy clothes and bodies on show, not knowing the first about ordering food. It'll be nothing less than a mess. Okay, okay. I guess you two really are... I guess you two are really in need of some social skills. So take this. Go out there and take care of yourselves for once. Senpai hands them some money, sends them off, and watches on smugly as I walk away from the convention hall. Two big cats on a grand adventure to order lunch for themselves. It's a sight to behold. You know, you really did a great job, Senpai. Huh? With what? You worked so hard to prepare for today. Didn't you have to ask the, well, patron god of the Yon family? I was worried when you told me that. You mean Grandpa? <laughs> There's no need to worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, but it's not like you exactly get along with your family. Why would that, that, uh, Grandpa have any reasons to help you in the first place? Were there conditions in return for his help? Frankly, I was surprised too. Grandpa didn't even ask anything in return. Of course, I asked some friends to keep on lookout before I met him. You know, in case I needed to find a way to escape. But it was fine. That's in no way fine! It's not like anything bad came of it anyway. Grandpa just wanted me to ask you a question. What did they want to ask, want to ask me? <laughs> I'll save that for later. What do you mean? Is it something serious? No, of course not. I wouldn't hold out on you if it was. It's just something about myself. Honestly, I have no idea why Grandpa wanted me to ask you about it. Anyways, in the end, he agreed to help, so it all worked out in the end. Incarnating two gods for an entire day. It was really that easy? It'd be wrong to call it easy. Well, I don't really know how much about how it works. Hey, come on. You don't need to keep worrying your little head on stuff like this. Today's a day to have fun and enjoy each other's company. Oh, then should I corner you on this tomorrow instead? You'd better not. Senpai, if you go behind my back to do things like this, it's hard for me not to worry over it. It was meant to help you. Did you or did you not put yourself into a position where you could be in danger? I didn't. Even if I had no idea what Grandpa was thinking, it was clear he didn't want to hurt me. Alright, please, just take care of yourself. I don't want to see you hurt. Heh, <laughs> sure thing, sweetie. Senpai, mischievous as ever. He's just the same, even after becoming a genuine god. I can't help but let out a loud sigh before returning to my chat with Senpai, our conversation swinging back to the convention itself. Soon enough, Lin Hu and Kulao return to us, having completed their grand adventure to uncover the secrets of buying lunch. Liao! What? You got fried chicken again? It's too much! <laughs> what an opportunity. I'll finally be able to experience the taste of such finely cooked poultry with a real tongue. Chicken. Good. Even you, Kulao. Bon appetit! Liao, this is for you. Lin Hu passes me a regular meal box, which appears to be the same as Kulao's meal. As for Lin Hu, but he got an entire family bucket all to himself. I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. Hmm, the aroma. It's remarkable. I don't think I've ever seen someone so excited by this mere scent of a meal. <sighs> the taste. All it took was one bite before Lin Hu's restraint broke completely, quickly moving to devour the entire bucket of fried chicken before him. In a matter of seconds, he had stuffed a chicken leg into his mouth, eaten it, and as if to savor the taste, licked his fingers greedily before delightfully seeking another bite. That was astonishing. I could never have imagined how brilliant real taste of fried chicken would be. So it tastes different to the chi? Certainly. After all, chi only conveys the concept of taste. As such, I do... I do know how things taste, but it appears nothing compares to first-hand experience. Never had I imagined the real taste of food to be this complex. Even the texture is way beyond the bounds of a spiritual body like my own. It's clear to see that Lin Hu has, is completely enthralled within his own musings. Kulao, on the other hand, appears to, be, appears to be still on his first piece of chicken, 
eating away as if you must savor every single bite. Kulao, you haven't eaten much. I don't like it. I like very much. Does it taste good? I not eat before. As Linku say, real food tastes different. Very different. I really wish they could enjoy simple things like this every day. But this is just how it is. They only have this for today. I shouldn't ask for any more. After all, I'm not the one who made this happen. I watch on as Kulao eats away meticulously, and Lin Hu remains deep within his own delicious world. Maybe I should get them more food. Do they actually gain weight now that they have bodies? Then if they did gain weight, would their spiritual bodies be affected? I mean, it's not like you could put put on that much in one day, but yeah, I'd rather not risk it. We'll have dinner later anyways. Still, it's not like I'll be able to see something like this again. I should take a photo. Pulling out my phone, I line the two of them up in the frame and snap a shot. Lin Hu and Kulao eating together, for the first time in their lives. Aw, we don't get to see the photo. Alright, now that lunch is over and we have plenty of time to walk around the convention, I think it's time we move on to the highlight of the day. Highlight? What do you want about? What did you prepare behind my back this time? Hey, today's a special day. I had to make sure to prepare everything to be just right. What kind of preparation? <laughs> well... You know the old man's blog is pretty famous. There were even a bunch of dujins based on it around here. And a lot of people cosplay at conventions, so... I figured it would be super cool to have them cosplay themselves. Wait, you mean... Yep, exactly. I brought their outfits. As if to reassure myself on Senpai's claims, I take a look around. Without a doubt, there are heaps of cosplayers all over the convention. Of course, most of them are fursuiters. It's a furry convention, after all. But a handful of them are human cosplayers. Well, actually, no matter what Lin Hu and Kulao are beastmen in my eyes. Aren't they just humans to everyone else? This isn't really the place for that, is it? That shouldn't matter. They're still furry-related characters. It's not like there's any rules against it. Even if there's no rules to break, you should at least ask them first. Kulao already told me he was all for it. What? Yes. Then what about Lin Hu? My outfit is... a little bit... Take it easy, old man. People love you for it. You want worshippers, right? If anything, doing this will be a boon for your following. Should a god really gain a following like this? Well, alright, if it helps me gain worshippers, then it is not so bad. See? No problem at all. Let's get started. Swiftly but surely, Senpai pulls the two of them into a nearby changing room. It's not long before I hear a commotion begin to erupt as they walk over to me. Then Hu and Kulao stand before me, looking just like what I see every day, although somewhat different. I guess the materials feel a little off from their spiritual forms but I wouldn't be able to tell you how. Huh. However, everyone couldn't care less about such minute inaccuracies. Almost immediately, they're surrounded one once people began to recognize them. Swarmed, Lin Hu folds his arms to cover his chest, putting on a serious face that I know is just a front to cover his shyness. Kulao, on the other hand, stands there like normal, observing the crowd innocently and answering questions with a short word or two. The quality of the cosplay is up to a near-authentic level, clearly driving the fans crazy. Wait, no, they are authentic. Liku Lao, please notice me. Um, do you mind if I take a selfie with you? Hey, could you do that pose where you- Yeah, that one. The crowd steadily gathers around the stony Lin Hu, and ever accommodating Ku Lao, who continues to do whatever everyone likes. I guess this is why Senpai kept going on about how Ku Lao would make it great in showbiz. There really is a lot of people. They have the perfect figures and personality for it. personalities for it. Who wouldn't love to see them cosplay? So, Senpai, why did you go out of your way to make these costumes for them? Sure, of course, you wanted to do something cool and all, but... Or maybe it was more that he just wanted to show off? I'm a little worried. Like, shouldn't we go to an amusement park or something? Do something they can actually experience with their real bodies. Yeah, what do you think is wrong? Huh? You can tell what I'm thinking? Not that. I mean, we should be making the most out of today. Let me ask you, Kulao and the old man, what do you think their goals are? Goals? What do you mean? I mean, long-term goals, like career goals. The old man, for example, he wants worshippers, right? Widely speaking, he wants people to maintain the traditional beliefs in their hearts. Same thing for Kulao. He wants everyone to pay attention to the, ab to the aboriginal Taiwanese people and tribes, like the Rukai. I'll admit, worshippers gained like this are biased. But you always have to take the first step. If you don't show off, then no one will ever pay attention to you. So you want them to get close to real people? Mm-hmm. If they take this chance, they'll save themselves a whole bunch of trouble in the future. If you say so, 
Still, you can't solve everything so easily. I have faith that they can hold out on their own. Let's head off. I saw some I saw some really cool stuff over there. You just want to spend time alone with me, don't you? Yep, you got me. After all, it's my first convention with you, Liao. It's not like we can lose two at this point. So let's spend time together before the day is over. Okay, okay, I see now. Even if it's Incarnation Day, I shouldn't leave Senpai behind. So I guess this will be the best chance I get to walk away for a while. Those two have more than enough fans to deal with as it is. I walk off with Senpai towards the back of the convention hall. He's not nearly as obvious... No. He's not nearly as obvious as Lin Hu or Lee Gulao, so, it's a, so it's nice to get a chance to relax. As we went along, Senpai picked out some cute merchandise for himself, although he doesn't seem to be really interested in any of the dujins. It's not like Senpai is into furries, into furry stuff, so I guess that's to be expected. I wonder if he finds the convention boring? A second look at him tells me otherwise. He darts between booths, clearly deeply invested in all the cute artwork and merchandise festooned across them. Watching him, I can't help but smile at his, at his fervor. I think that's how you pronounce it. He tried to walk through everything slowly, but Senpai already went through all the stalls he, when he was shopping for me this morning. There's nothing much left to do, so it wasn't long before he returned to the other two big cats. To the surprise of neither of us, Lin Hu and Ku Lao are still swamped by sides of the crowd. While Ku Lao dutifully makes poses and fulfills requests, Lin Hu, on the other hand, seems exhausted. Afraid that Lin Hu wouldn't be able to last much longer, I suggest that Senpai should escort them back to the changing rooms. Soon enough, they return their clothes from earlier. Oh my. I appear to have gained quite a new understanding of my worshippers. I guess you've never dealt with so many people before. That would be putting it lightly. I've never had much experience being prayed to by any worshippers at all, for that matter. I want to remind him that they just wanted photos with him, but for his sake, I hold back my correction. Did you think it was cool, Kulao? Cool yes, satisfied people. I am happy. Didn't it stress you out at all? All those people were asking a lot out of you. No? See, that's why I said he'd knock it out of the park in the entertainment biz. Sure, senpai. Anyway, it's getting on into the afternoon now. I think it's about time I spend some time with you, Kulao. Wanna head off? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, cheer up, old man. I'll be here to keep you company. Whatever. Without much of a fuss, senpai pulls Lin Hu away, leaving me alone with Kulao. Then I take hold of his paw and leisurely walk him back through the bustle of the convention hall. Even though I've been through most of the booths many times at this point, I can't help but find enjoyment in watching Kurao's face light up in excitement as we explore the hall. Not to mention the way he positively beams with every first order he comes in contact with, for whatever reason, he loves them to bits. And then, eventually, our time at the convention has had to come to an end. Guess it's home time, right? Certainly. What a wonderful day. Many pictures. Very happy. What should we do for dinner? It's not like you guys have real bodies every day, so I guess we should do something special. <laughs> I already made a reservation. R really? Yeah, of course. They get to eat as humans today. Not like I could let this go without preparing something fancy for them. Fancy? How fancy? Nothing less than an all-you-can-eat buffet. There are not many nice buffets in town, so obviously I had to pick. I suppose I should think of you more highly than before, Kitten. I'd have always done this, and don't call me Kitten. Shuchi, thank you. You did much for us. <laughs> My pleasure. After all, being Liao's boyfriends. Boyfriends or boyfriend? Well, that's up to you, I guess. It doesn't bother me. Let's get dinner going already. Come on! I... Mm. As he declared earlier, Senpai took us to an extravagant buffet. To say the least, it was full of surprises. One of those, as expected, being the price. But if there was any day to splurge on, it would be today. After a hearty, decadent meal that only left me th that left me only a little guilty, we went home. With the day finally over, Senpai removes the two golden chain implements that facilitated their incarnations. Well, that's it, I suppose. Sad. Want more? Once the chains were taken away, they returned to their spiritual forms. Their piles of discarded clothes left as the only reminder their once physical bodies. It wasn't long before even that was picked up by Senpai. Hey. I'll keep on trying. It it won't be easy. I like I can ask Grandpa to do this every day. It might take years, maybe more, but we can incarnate you guys again. So please, look forward to that day. 
I fully understand. Even this, this was more than enough. Although there will always be many places I would like to go with Liao. Want to take Liao to, want to take Liao home, my home. Want to tell tribe Liao is my. Uh, you're what? Kulao, you can't just stop there. Senpai, I owe you so... I owe you so, so much for today. <laughs> Don't worry yourself. Uh, well... He stammers as if he's trying to hold back what he wants to say. Huh? What is it? Don't tell me you've got another trick up your sleeve. It's not a trick at all. I just... I just want a reward. Can I ask for a simple reward? Is that why you did everything today? You gotta work it hard before even thinking about getting your reward. Come on, we've been together for ages now. You don't need to be like that. Alright, so what kind of reward do you want? Um, well, it's simple. But that doesn't mean I don't want you to think any less about it. What do you mean? Well, I... I want you to give me a name, Liao. A name? What's wrong with Yan Shu Chi? Not that. There's a difference between my human name and, well, me. Senpai Shuchi. I can't believe you still don't know something so simple. Hmm. How should I explain? But first, is this the thing that your grandpa wanted you to ask me? Huh? Well, yeah. I mean, I still don't have any idea why he wanted me to ask that. Ask this. That doesn't matter. It's something I wanted to ask as well. I'm not so sure why myself, but I know there's probably a reason. You know what? Um, so about my name... Yanshu Shi? Eh? What? This isn't a matter about your human name, and it's not about your Yaogwai name either. You're Yanshu Chi, as both a human and as a Yaogwai. No matter what, you're Yanshu Chi. As a Yaogwai, I'm still Yanshu Chi. Even when all of him is part of... Even when all of him is a part of me, so much of me isn't him. I know you're confused right now. You're probably hung up on who you were before you took in Yon Shushi's memories. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't really matter. You're you. You're Yon Shushi, And nothing will stop that name from being yours, and yours alone. You mean, you want me to have the same name? I guess, yeah. If you decide to live as him, then you don't need any other name. You are Yon Shushi. I am Yon Shushi? Mm-hmm. I thought you'd know that by now. But... I was... Okay, okay, I got it. If you really want me to give you a name, then listen carefully. It doesn't matter who you used to be. From today and every day, and every day from now on, I give you the name Yan Shu Chi. Is that okay? Okay? It's just... strange. But that's how it is. I know. I... I like this name. Yeah? Well, thanks, Liao. There's no need to thank me. All I did was clear things up for you. It still means a lot to me. Anyway, these chains are out of power now. I should probably return them to Grandpa. Which means I should get going on that right away. Uh, by the way, I probably won't be back tonight. What? Senpai, hold on. W what's wrong? Just wait with me for a bit. Huh? Sh sure. I shoot Lin Hu and Kulao a wink, trying to cover my intent. They get the point and silently exit the room, leaving the two of us alone together. Eh? Come here, senpai. I signal him over by patting the edge of my bed. Apprehensive, he takes a seat next to me. Senpai, I'll only ask you this once. Did you do everything, the incarnation, all today just so you could ask me that question? Well, sorta? I sigh hopelessly. Seriously, you should know this already. Come here. I take hold of Sunpite and pull him into my chest. Whoa. Then I rub the fur on the top of his head vigorously. This idiot. What? Uh. More. More. I need him to know. I push Sunpite to rest his head against my thigh and then tickle his belly with all my might. W what are you doing? It tickles. <laughs> Senpai struggles in my arms, but his protests are in vain. I keep on tickling, my hands trying to reach every inch of his being. And at very last, I hold him tight. Liao? Senpai, promise me, don't do this again. Do... do what? Don't make yourself unhappy just to please us. 
don't untrust me again. And don't you ever untrust yourself. You're not a bad person. Not now, not ever. You deserve your happiness. You deserve it without ever needing to feel beholden to anyone or anything else. So trust me, I'm your boyfriend, and it's my duty to make sure you're happy. I'll pet you, I'll hug you, I'll do whatever you want. So just ask me. Just ask me and I'll do anything I can for you, and I'll never ask for anything in return. At the very least, I don't want you ever doing something for my benefit that hurts you or makes you suffer. The Incarnation, that cost you a lot, didn't it? All of that, just to ask me a few simple words. I don't know whether to call you stupid, but... Don't do that again. No matter what, don't do that again. Promise me, okay? I won't take no for an answer. Okay. If you're really okay with it, then why do you look like that? I... I just feel like I can't promise you that right away. And yet, you already said yes. I want you to keep that promise. From now on, I want you to talk to me. Talk to me before you ever go out and do something to make yourself unhappy. That last part is going to be hard. I pinch Senpai's cheeks between my hands. Tough luck, you already agreed to it. Hmm. It's a promise. Never throw away your happiness. Yeah. You really are an idiot. Firmly, I rub his fuzzy face between my hands. But Liao, I used to... No more. I kiss him on the lips, disallowing even a single word, to... word more to pass through them. The wooden floor below me groans with every step. I take note of the unstable floorboards, carefully evading them as I trudge through the hallway. Even after all my years of experience walking down this path... Okay, it's doing a weird thing. Carefully evading them as I trudge through the hallway, even after all my years of experience walking down this path, I still cannot avoid them all. I step on another one, it responds with a creep that shoots right up my spine, my tail standing on end. That noise, it seems no different than a whisper, but somehow I know I can only hear it because of my powers. Those whispers are talking about me. Right. After all, I don't belong to this family. My only call to this place is a soul, but I still live under this roof. I am a Yaoi, yet my power is half divine. No matter where I am, I'm out of place. I have nothing in common with the Yaogwai here, not my background, nor my past life. I am not human. As such, I do not fear them. Neither do I respect their nature, which I am no longer forced to live by. I'm just a horrible creature who's no better than a pile of dirt. An abnormal individual. That's the young master. The floor groans. The pitiful. And the moonlight mutters. I don't understand, for someone like him too, and the wind of the night whispers past my ears. What a shame. All the memories soared under this roof speak to me. And then, I stop. Here is where I drained my blood, drained my, revor my remorse, almost drained my power, in order to discard all the things I hated. Now, everything was silent. The floor fixed in place, the moonlight leaving nothing but gloom, and the wind barely crawling through the air. I measuredly placed the golden chains onto the ground before me. They now rest in the space solely occupied by Grandpa's shadow. So, I asked, I don't understand it, but the name Liao gave me is Yang Shu Chi. I feel the shadows of onlookers quiver as if surprised by this. It's fine, but it's obviously- If the name was any other, you would have killed me? I suppose I'm lucky. The night wind whispers once again to the floor below. I almost want to call them out for being bold and insolent. What? Become the patron god of the Yan family? That's so sudden. Why would- The shadows roar with harsh voices that pierce painfully through my head. What about his divine power? A Yaogwai will be a Yaogwai. Our troublesome, attention-seeking, but adorable, young master. But, I'm just... my name. It's the only thing... The name and the memories. Such a gamble. 
Grandpa has already decided. Is it really okay? Yes, but even if I nearly drained the last of the chi before, I still remember. I still remember those people. I carry more than the memories of Yanshu Chi. Well, are you sure? Do you want me to consume Grandma? Not now. Ah, yeah. Truthfully, you scared me. After all, she is still in good health. Then everyone after that? But I'll probably... I understand. This must be a fine to become a true member of the Yan family. But is it really okay? I know your... I mean, our kind do not follow the same moral standards as humans. But what would be the descendants of the Yan fam... What would the descendants of the Yan family think of these actions? I know. It's not the same. Oh, alright. In the end, after all is said and done, will, will I still be me? It is. Because I have the name Yan Shu Chi. So that's why you wanted me to ask Liao. Then, what about Liao? I can do whatever I want before the death of this body? I see. As long as to him, I am Yan Shu Chi. I will feel Yan Shu Chi's soul more intensely than any other. But even then, my Yao Guai powers are so weak, I wouldn't be of any use. Grandpa? Shadows break the silence, disrupted and disorderly. From the moon above to the ground below, their harsh whispers embody the very atmosphere around me. Some shadows lean in, others shift aside. They shout, they curse, they groan, and they plead. However, Grandpa is not swayed under their deafening murmurs. You want to give it to me? This is too much. I don't deserve it. It's a promise. Never throw away your happiness. Liao. I know. <laughs> How strange. I thought I hated this family. Right. <laughs> I appreciate everything. I will do my best for this house. Even though I still don't know how to get along with the family. Even though there are many things I want to do that the family disapproves of. Even though my happiness does not reside anywhere near this house. I will try. Just like all other human beings. Because in the end, fallen leaves will always return to their roots. Even if those roots are not from where the leaves came. The wind will always blow, and I will always be swept away by my fate. So, I must still try. Because... I am not a Yaogwai, nor am I a god. I am, and always will be, Yan Shu Chi. Sad. Okay. That was Neko Jishi Epilogue. I swear to God, during the credit sequence, I was tearing up a little bit. Mm. This is, 
I doubt this will be the last Nekojishi thing that I do. Since I feel like I want to include the characters more in various things, but I don't know. Okay. Well, not much can be said other than thank you for watching. Stay safe, have a good night.